Hey guys, what's happening? Steve here from graphicdesignertips.com. Thank you for joining us for this video tutorial. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is um, how to make a clipping mask in Adobe Illustrator. So clipping masks are a very big deal. Uh, there's something you want to know about and know how to do correctly because you're going to use them a lot when you're laying out, especially in Adobe Illustrator. Um, you use similar things in InDesign, it's kind of the same concept, but if you're not used to Illustrator, uh, pay attention and uh, uh, let me know what you get out of this. So on the screen right now, you're going to see a photo of my little princess. Her name is Sheba and she is a Sheba Inu. Uh, she's about eight years old and she's having fun on the beach in this photo. But what we're going to actually do is we're going to come cut out some of that beach because I don't really like the fact that this photo is this big rectangular photo. I want to soften it up, throw it in a nice circle and, you know, um, have that circle outline maybe in a color and put a shadow on it. So that's what really a clipping mask is going to do for you. So uh, first things first, we're going to come up here and we're going to select any kind of a shape. We can do a rectangle, well, excuse me, we have a rectangle already, but, you know, we can also, you know, crop it with using a rectangle, a uh, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, star, but in this, in this example, I'm going to use an ellipse tool, and I'm going to make a symmetrical ellipse, and I'm just going to grab her face. All right, so I'm going to fill this with white with a black outline. Uh, and the reason I did that was to show you, so you can visually see where the shape is on your screen. Um, but I just want to point out one thing. Um, when you make a clipping mask, you need to make sure that the shape that you want, the photo or the other element to, to basically jump inside or get nested inside, you need to make sure that shape is on top of the element or the photo because if you don't, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to the back right now using the keyboard command. So now it's behind this image of my dog. And if you select both of these now and you go to do that clipping mask, you go to object clipping mask make. Okay. It's going to say, oops, can't make clipping mask. The top selected object must be a path, a compound shape, a text object, or a group of those. So obviously we can't do it this way. So we're going to hit okay. And I'm just going to back up and throw that and so that, you know, comes back on top of the photo. And in this case, we're going to select both of them again. And you can either right click on a PC, uh, you can control click on a Mac, or you can go back up to object, clipping mask and make. So in this case, I'm just going to use my shortcuts because uh, I don't like spending too much time on things. And, and down the road, you, you guys should definitely learn. Uh, your keyboard commands to get speedy uh, fast of these things. So control, click, make clip and mask. There you go. There's my dog, there's Sheba, and now she's in a circle. So um, what I'm going to show you next is how to uh, alter that photo within that clipping mask. So you're going to go to the direct selection tool, which is the letter A on your keyboard. Uh, so if you're too lazy to come up here, just hit the letter A and you'll get there right away. So now you're going to click anywhere that photo is and you're going to see that the photo, you can actually move it as long as you're using the direct selection. If I hit V on the keyboard, go back to my regular selection, watch what happens when I try to move it. The whole thing moves. So back to the direct selection. Here we go. Like I said, the letter A. All right. Now I can move her however I want in there. If I want to scale this image, I will hit the letter E or I'll come over here to the free transform tool and once you have once you're on that tool you can come to one of these corner points hold down the shift to make sure you proportionally resize this image and now I can resize her however I want within the circle so a good tip is uh, if you see what's happening here if I click off uh, that looks very sloppy um, you know it's it's not a it's not a circle anymore because obviously we ran out of room in our photo so as a guide what I always do is uh, I select this whole thing with the regular selection tool because it'll select it as one element um, and I will come over here to the basic fill and I make this so I have the stroke on it so it gives me kind of like a guide uh, on the photo um, so I know where you know I have white space where it needs to be filled so uh, again, I'm going to hit that E and I'm going to expand this a bit and I'm going to get her how I want her in there. So that's, that's a nice photo. 
uh, of her. Actually, you know what? I'll make her face a little bit bigger. All right, there we go. So the next thing we're gonna do on this is, I'm gonna make this stroke a little bit thicker. All right, just to add a little bit to this, right? Okay, and we're gonna come up to effects. And you can do a lot of different effects on here, but I'm gonna first show you guys how to do a, a drop shadow on here. Uh, I always preview it just to see what's going on because I'm not gonna hit okay, then have to try to you know jump back in there and change it again. So. Um, this is a pretty cool shadow. Just so you guys know, you can change the color of your shadows by double clicking. Maybe I want a red shadow, you know, like a pinkish shadow. You know, it depends on the feel of the type of piece or, you know, the artwork that I'm making. Um, usually I leave them black. But, but that looks pretty cool right there. Um, the next thing you can do is uh, we can actually come over here to the appearance. Uh, the appearance window. If not, you go to window in appearance um, and you can take that effect and you can trash it, throw it out for now. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a feather. And what a feather is going to do is it is going to blur the outside edges of this. So this gives a nice, soft, dramatic look to a photo. Uh, you know, in, if you know, if you're making like a an a, a invitation or you, you know, you're making just a, you know a nice photo, you know, uh, a nice excuse me layout for you know or like a birthday card or something. Who knows? But um, these are the things that will come in useful uh, for you in the future. Clipping masks are big. So um, that's it, guys. If you have any questions, comments, I would love to hear them. Um, I hope this all helps. Um, and that's it. Have a great night.